our investing tip series. And before we get started, I just want to remind you that if you sign up on BehindTheBalanceSheet.com, you'll get not only my newsletter, but also access to our club site where there's loads of free training materials which complement these YouTube videos. And I think you'll, I think you'll enjoy them. I think you'll find them very useful. And if you're interested in going to the next level, I suggest you look at our investing courses for private investors. Again, they're on our website, BehindTheBalanceSheet.com. So investing tip number seven is focus on quality. And let me explain a little bit about what I mean by this before we go into a series of investing tips looking at the different types of economic modes. So quality is the hallmark of a number of outstanding investors, best known, of course, Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger, but also a number of really outstanding investors in the UK. Terry Smith launched his fund 10 years ago. He's now got, I think, $20 billion under management. Nick Train has been going for a long time. And um, Linzel Train has got an outstanding reputation. And, and again, a very, very strong focus on quality. But the issues about this are how do you define quality and how do you measure it? And if you listen to Warren Buffett or read his letters, he talks about, you know, holding stocks forever and never selling. And this is the, this idea of holding forever. That's the mantra of the, of the Buffett acolytes. But, you know, back when Warren Buffett started talking about that, it used to be very difficult to identify winning stocks 20 years out. But I think that's much more difficult today because of disruption. And how do you identify high quality companies? Well, the current vogue is to use return on invested capital. And, and clearly, companies with consistently high returns on invested capital should outperform in the long term, provided you don't pay too much for them. And funnily enough, many investors are happy to own these high ROIC stocks, almost irrespective of the valuation. And Terry Smith, for example, of Fundsmith fame, claims it doesn't matter how much you pay if you buy the right stock. And he cites Buffett's acquisition of Coca-Cola. But this was done a very opportune time. But such was the power of the compounding returns that Buffett could have paid twice the price and still beaten the market. Now that's fine looking back with hindsight, but how many of us can predict the value of these compounders in 20 years time? Coca-Cola in that period proved a truly exceptional business. And obviously Warren Buffett's a truly exceptional investor and identified that. And what my point is, is that it's much, much more difficult today because of disruption, because it's very much more difficult to understand how the world will look in 20 years time. When Buffett brought Coca-Cola, the, the world was a slower changing, uh, a more static place. And I'm not saying it was easy to spot Coca-Cola. Of course it wasn't, but there wasn't the risk of disruption. And there is the risk of disruption today. And identifying high quality companies with data like ROIC, I mean, I think you can argue it's more difficult today because the internet has accelerated the pace of change and it's led to much more disintermediation. So it's much harder to predict the long-term quality of particular business models. Of course, it's easier to predict that Google is almost certain to be around in 20 years time. Facebook, almost certain to be around in 20 years time. But the power of compounding returns is much better understood today than it was when Buffett bought Coke. Because ROIC is much more closely scrutinized it tends to be a factor in all sorts of algorithmic um, computer driven models. And as a consequence of this, the fact that it's more closely scrutinized, better understood, it's less likely to be undervalued by the stock market. So buying quality isn't as easy as it used to be, especially because many of these compounders, many of the stocks that Terry Smith owns have been revalued very significantly. I think when he started in 2010, the free cash flow yield of his portfolio was something like 7%. And I think that the free cash flow yield of his portfolio today is under 3%. It's gone up, or the, the valuation has been re-rated by something of the order of 60%, maybe even more. So how do you, um, how do, you do this? 
I think you need to identify high quality companies subjectively. And Warren Buffett coined the term economic malt, a structural impediment which obstructs competitors from entering your company's markets and reducing its returns on capital. And the effect of this is a sustainable high return on invested capital. So what I'm going to do in the next few videos in this series is I'm going to look at each of the malts and explain how they work and the sort of things that you need to look for. So watch out for those. And don't forget, if you subscribe to the channel, you won't miss any of those episodes. So please be sure and subscribe. Thanks for watching.